Oh, I totally agree. And, you know, LabCorp and Quest, the two largest diagnostic labs in the United States, uh, both have a any, any fasting insulin that's less than 25. They consider that normal. Currently. Isn't that remarkable? And, and to me, that's severe hyperinsulinemia. If you're yeah, fasting, again, you're that's just cold. for the evidence that the average American, because those those blood those blood um, cutoffs, those ranges are provided based on kind of national averages. Yes. That to me is just further evidence of the problem that the average American is so insulin resistant that we think anything up to the mid twenties is normal. That's not normal. Yeah. In fact, let me start with that last point uh, because yeah. there, there are a group of, there have been several biomedical scientists that have bemoaned the shift in clinical practice um, to focus on A1C given its its challenges which which I'll elaborate on in, in a moment but but bemoaning it particularly because with the rise of a1c came the death of the oral glucose tolerance test that used to be a more commonly used clinical intervention but you know it's a little time consuming which means it's more financially it's more costly um, there's a little more nuance into its interpretation, but it gives far more detail yeah. than the A1C gives for reasons that I'll, I'll get into in just a second. But by way of brief background, it's helpful for people just to appreciate that glycation is this chemical process that is uh, a function of a reducing sugar irreversibly non, non enzymatically. So it doesn't need an enzyme to do it. It doesn't need something to kind of mediate the two and bring them together. It's just this reducing sugar, glucose, fructose, galactose, even other molecules that you wouldn't think of um, can fit into this where they will irreversibly bind to a protein or DNA um, or a lipid and create this glycation end product. Now, importantly, and this in fact is somewhat driven from a conversation that Ken and I have had just recently, that term glycation can even be invoked with other reducing sugars. So it's important for people to know that that term is sometimes used as an all-encompassing term, even though, as we'll get into, not all tests will measure all of that. But it's important for people to realize that as much as we focus on HbA1c or hemoglobin A1c, this is in fact itself a reflection of, of glycation that can be happening everywhere. It's just not easy to measure glycation in the kidney, which is going to be increasing the risk of kidney failure. Or it's not easy to measure the degree of glycation in the blood vessels, which is a very telling feature for atherosclerosis or the, the synthesis or the beginning of an atherosclerotic plaque. So as much as we just want to look at HbA1c as some marker of glucose in the blood, we should also appreciate that it can potentially be a sign of glycation that's happening everywhere, even skin, collagen, wrink causing wrinkles and premature yep. aging of the skin. All of these things can be impacted by glycation. So it helps us appreciate HbA1c, which if we just drill right down to it, is us measuring the degree to which we've had this irreversible glycation binding to the functional part of the red blood cell. And, and very briefly, within the red blood cell, we have this complicated protein structure called hemoglobin. Hemoglobin's most famous job is to carry oxygen and at the same time to carry some other gases, even like carbon dioxide, albeit to lesser degrees. One immediate effect at the red blood cell is that the more it is glycated, the less suitable it is now to carry oxygen. So one immediate consequence of this is the person's reduced ability to move oxygen, potentially creating conditions of hypoxia or compromised oxygen movement through the body. Now, this, of course, becomes a particular problem in a diabetic, in someone who's chronically hyperglycemic. They not only have the, the, the glycation of the blood vessels, damaging blood vessels, but to compound that, they also have the blood itself not carrying oxygen as well. So no wonder they develop such poor wounds and, and sort of decay flesh because the blood isn't flowing very well. So it's important for people to appreciate th that what glycation is and how the HbA1c is a reflection of a greater whole body phenomenon.